there's endless possibilities and like just it's completely fascinating and you can lose yourself in it so you'd never be bored <laughs> So my name is Loz Atkinson. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, um, but I work a lot with uh, space and um, I create paintings of imagined nebulas, which mix a lot of uh, sort of NASA, Hubble, James Webb type imagery with geometry and uh, mathematics. I've always wanted to be an artist. The most thing I enjoy about it is the freedom uh, that it gives you because you're your own boss, so you can decide what you're doing. But um, yeah, it, it really gives you that time to get really into grips with the subject and like really delve deep into it. So with my space work, it's been fascinating because when I was younger, I used to be terrified of space. And um, But then discovering Carl Sagan and his amazing way of des uh, describing sort of how the universe works, uh, just made me fall in love with it. I think it's the endless possibility. I don't just copy like NASA imagery or uh, Hubble imagery. Like I sort of absorb it and then create these imagined nebula. But there's always a little part of me that's like, because the universe is infinite, like these could exist somewhere. We just haven't found it yet. <laughs> so again, it's that sort of like the endless possibility. I was born in Scotland, in Inverness, and uh, my dad was in the RAF. So we moved around a lot as uh, when I was younger, mainly at school in Scotland, and then came down to England, and that's where I went to high school. The thing that I love about space is, is that it's nature. And sometimes people forget that, like, outer space is nature as well. and. Uh, so I blame my granddad for this like inherent sort of fascination with nature because he used to take us fishing and like on, you know, walks down rivers and telling us all what the birds were and all this. I did an art GCSE <laughs> and uh, again, didn't do very well in it, but it, I, for whatever reason, I was always very sort of, I always say pig headed. <laughs> but I suppose you'd call it determined <laughs> or like tenacious in the fact that this is what I want to do, art. So went to college and I did psychology, sociology, uh, ICT and art. And um, again, it was my worst subject <laughs> and my careers uh, counselor would be, oh, you need to go into psychology. I'm like, no, I'm going to be an artist. <laughs> How are you going to do that? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, got a C for my A-level art and then somehow managed to get into uni and yeah, went to De Montfort and uh, yeah, I suppose the rest is history in that sense. I've always like had like stupid little jobs, you know, retail and everything all through uni to like pay for myself. So I... I was very determined to not work for someone else because I've had I've had a job since I was about, you know, nine being a babysitter and like all through my teens. And I'm like, I'm not making money for someone else. I want to do it for myself. And um, so after I left uni, uh, the Prince's Trust helped me. I managed to get one of their, you know, set up your own business loans which afforded me to do this project called Elephant Parade in London. And I managed to buy a computer with that and like, so I could, you know, look for work and, you know, do sort of designs on Photoshop and stuff. And then, yeah, hooked, because it's always exciting. There's never one day the same. When I was younger, like even sort of looking at the stars, it was just the vastness. Like you can't get your head around it. Even now, like, I'm just blown away by it and it'll, I don't think that'll ever change. And I think that's, again, one of the things why it still fascinates me. So it's kind of a sad story a bit uh, because I, before moving into space, because I'm, I'm quite colour averse, I'm a bit of a goth. <laughs> so I'm very monotone. <laughs> and uh, so I painted terrestrial clouds, but getting my head around using lots of different colours 
was like a barrier for me. And I can't tell you why, but like my Nana died, unfortunately. And it just really gave me a kick to just do it. Like stop wasting your time ruminating over it, just do it. So I think the first space related piece, I did a charity piece um, on a dolphin um, because there's a star constellation named after a dolphin. That was, yeah, the first uh, piece where I sort of mixed terrestrial clouds going into the galaxy and then showing the star constellation. And um, yeah, that sold at auction for £22,000 for the charity. And I was just like, what? <laughs> because it's hard. Art's a lot of no. <laughs> um, but there's these little things that keep you hooked. So this is one of my imagined nebulas. They're all sort of inspired by Hubble and, well, now James Webb uh, imagery. But I, I hide this sacred geometry over the top. So here you can see the flower of life or a mandala. Um, and these sort of represent the sort of hidden structures that keep these, these massive structures together. So it's all macro, micro, all in the same thing. And because it's done through texture, so all here is gloss and these bits are matte, it alludes to that sort of um, multi-dimensional uh, sort of aspect of the universe, the holographic nature of the universe, the seen and unseen, the sort of the big is the small and the small is the big. I usually work on a few canvases at a time, so I'll prep them all up and then I'll put, put the sort of black base layer on and then I slowly build up uh, layers of colour using a brush. A lot of people think it's spray or um, airbrush, but it's all uh, hand painted with a brush. When I'm working on a few, it takes a few weeks to finish sort of each one. And then, yeah, sort of flick the stars on, find a point, draw the geometry on and then hand gloss all this. So I've got to keep a steady hand when I can. <laughs> so. <laughs> What advice would I give to my 16-year-old self? Listen to your intuition. Um, and, and don't be scared to follow what the path that you want to go on. Just because it might not be what everyone else is doing doesn't mean it's wrong. Just go for it. Don't second guess yourself. And sometimes, even at school, your best subjects or your worst subjects you might be doing bad in the grades, but it doesn't mean that you should give up on them if you're interested in the subject. It's just you haven't found your way of learning it yet. Science is very baffling, like if, you, especially like the sort of language used and like, you know, graphs and stuff. And it's like, it's, it's quite a barrier. But science, technology, engineering and maths, like they're in everything and you use it every day. It's in your pocket, in your phone. But like to add the arts in there is so important to have that accessibility because to sort of translate all that information into something visual speaks to people on a sort of, you know, inherent level. And I think, which then opens this sort of door to the wonderlust of finding out about all these things because it is fascinating you really do get lost in it. And like, once you're in it, you're hooked. And how much you take it to different levels of understanding is up to you. And I think everybody should be exposed to space and the universe. <laughs>